Hi, I'm Allison, and I am here with this week's questions and answers. Um, here we go. We had a lot of great questions from everybody all over the world. I'm going to start with Simone's question from Germany. And Simone has a silver poodle that has some brown sunburn. And she's wondering the best way to kind of get rid of this. So for a lot of silver dogs, like Shetland sheep dogs and stuff, I like you to use like a product with um, some bluing in it or like a blue quality to the shampoo. So if you used Chris Christensen's White on White, I think that this has worked successfully for me for blue or gray dogs that have some sunburning. But this is how I use it. I start with the coat dry. So the dog is in the bathtub. I mean, you know, if they're covered in mud or something, that's a different story. But if you have like a dog that you're just, you know, bathing for a show or just to clean up some of the brown sunburning, put it in the bathtub dry. And then to the brownest parts or all the areas that have brown shading to them, I want you to put the white on white shampoo on those areas straight. And I want you to really work it into those brown areas with your fingers. And then I want you to leave it on for about 10 minutes. While it's left on, you can then mix up some more white on white according to the direction. So use the proper dilution, that's always very important. And once you have the proper dilution on there, I want you to lightly rinse out the concentrated shampoo, get your dog completely wet like you're normally going to shampoo it, and then use the white on white, again, shampooing it thoroughly throughout your whole dog, and leave it on again for 10 minutes. I think it's really important with these products that you give them an actual chance to work. So many people will put the products on either diluted much too loose, so much too much water to the dilution, and then they don't leave the product on long enough, so you're not giving the product an actual chance to work. And I would also recommend this, like if you had black on black or another colored shampoo, on the areas that need the most change, I like to put it on that hair dry, and I find that that really works great. Um, we had another question from Ashley, and Ashley is from Nova Scotia, and she was talking about a dog that had missing hair. So missing hair like on the tail of a German pincer or on the ears, and just from, sometimes it's from weather, from rubbing either on a crate or um, a surface in the house, maybe a collar, maybe they've rubbed their nose. So there's a product called Equus Megatech Coat Builder, and it's made for horses that get halter rubs and I find that this works really really well so what I like to do is I like to keep a container of it where my dog is either going in and out of the door or maybe in and out of their crate if they sleep in a crate and I'm gonna put some of this Megatech builder on them twice a day and so I keep it near their crate or near the door so that I remember to do that and it's basically like a lady's hand cream or a lady's face cream you're just going to take a little bit like a dime sized amount and you're just going to rub it in the area that needs more hair and literally after three weeks you're going to notice a difference it's going to start to soften the skin and then you'll see little bits of hair growing in but I've had great success with this product so thanks for that question Ashley that was great um, Anna Marie, she has a Springer Spaniel who hates its head being held when she stacks it. And as we know, having control of your dog's head is one of the most important things when we're showing our dogs. So if you have a Springer that really doesn't like it, the first thing I would do is just check their teeth and check their ears. Make sure that, you know, if it's a young puppy, which I believe this is, that they don't have a tooth that's coming in funny or maybe an ear infection or just like a sore ear caused from teething. So check those things out because sometimes um, we just think that it's a behavioral thing then, but maybe it could be a physical thing, especially in a young puppy that's going through a lot of growing. So if that isn't the case, if the teeth and the ears all seem fine, then my next suggestion for you would be to start with a little bit of food. Now, I'm not a great believer in teaching our dogs how to stack with food, but if you have a dog that's being difficult, maybe with one hand you could be feeding it a little piece of food and the other hand like teaching it that it's okay for you to grasp on to the sides of your dog's head quite gently and just get them used to this motion. Um, depending on how coordinated you are with your hands or how smart the dog gets to the, using this technique, I would maybe you could get a friend to help you do it as well. Also, maybe start practicing holding the head on a grooming table just so that you have more control and maybe the dog is thinking more about being stacked instead of being on the ground where they think they can just run away and play. So those are the tips for you. I would try to make sure there isn't a physical discomfort and then just work on having your dog cooperate with you a little bit more. So another great question. 
Um, I have also had about three or four poodle people write in about when they should use a pin brush or a slicker brush. So one of the things I am going to say is that I really don't want you on any breed, like on a Cavalier, a Springer, um, any of the setters, a poodle, I don't want you using a slicker brush when you're brushing or drying their ears or their tail. Their ears and their tail take a lot of damage and the slicker will take out a little bit more hair than you actually think it is and therefore the ear just gets thinner and thinner and thinner and has less volume over time. So my rule of thumb is I am going to dry the ears and the tail or brush the ears and the tail 95% with a pin brush being very very careful to preserve all that hair and then yes especially when I'm drying I might use a slicker brush for the last 5% to get it absolutely poker straight but at that point I'm going to pretend that any hair that comes out in that slicker brush I have to eat and that is a really good motivator to make sure you don't take out too much hair so on any of those breeds that you want lots of volume in the tail and or the ears Please remember, pin brush 95% of the time, slicker brush 5% of the time, and I think that'll really help. And we have, uh, the last question is from Kareen, and she has a Papillon, and her Papillon's young, and he needs a little bit of leash work, but she does have a problem with him really like flipping up his front legs when he's moving around the ring. So she sent me a short video, and it was awesome because I could see exactly what she meant. And so we have a lot of this problem sometimes with our younger dogs that aren't used to have, having their front legs like move, like they always think they can just look up at you and when they look up, their front legs go up. So to combat this, what I like to do with those kind of dogs is I like them to carry a toy in their mouth. So if you can get a little tiny toy that they might pick up, you can throw it down on the ground, let them pick up, and then immediately start walking. Like don't let them play with it because we want them to think about the toy in their mouth. We don't want them to think about their front legs. And you'll notice that they start carrying it and then they start looking forward because they're thinking about where can they take this toy and they start really using the mechanics of their own bodies better. So Kareen, I want you to give that a try and let me know how it goes. And again, thank you for your great question. So that is the, the, that, that is that for this week's question and answers. And I want to just talk to you about our whole school subscription. Our whole school sub subscription means you get absolutely everything in our school. And as we add more courses, you're, you've maybe noticed through some of our emails or some of our social media posts that we have some of the masters of our sport contributing courses to our school. And that's just going to keep expanding. So if you subscribe to the school, as every new course is added, you get access to that course, just like Netflix. And why wouldn't you want to learn things about the sport from the absolute best people in the world at it. Um, another thing we're gonna bring to you is we're gonna bring to you a dog show forum. So starting about mid 2019, we're gonna have an online community. We want it to be one of the biggest online dog communities in the world. And we're gonna talk about everything. We're gonna talk about vaccinations. We're gonna talk about nutrition. We're gonna talk about how to show your dog. We're gonna be going to talk about absolutely everything. We're gonna have mentors that are the very best in the sport in that forum and they're gonna be in there weekly answering your questions. So you can have a question about a toenail, you can have a question about a dog food. We're gonna get product experts in there talking to you, answering all of your questions. And the only way you can be part of this forum is to subscribe to our school. But we're really, really excited about bringing these mentors to you directly. So that's it, and just stay tuned for our next episode of Questions and Answers with Alice. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video please give us a like, and if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to our channel below. Also, check out leadingedgedogshowacademy.com for our premium content. We had a lot of fun bringing you all this information. See you soon. Bye.